All right, so what I want to do here is talk a little bit about functions that call other functions. We're going to need this because as we progress, we're going to learn to write more task driven functions or more specific functions. Basically, this helps you down the line. If you're writing a really big program or you're writing a program with lots of different people, then basically you don't want a function that does lots and lots of different things. If you need to change something later on, it could be problematic. Also, if there's a bug or an error, something you weren't expecting, you now have to go through all these different things that the function does and try to figure out what caused it to break. So part of this is going to be functions calling other functions. So I'm going to start off with a very simple example here. And so we're going to basically square four numbers and then we're going to add those squares together and we're going to return that. Okay. So I'm going to start out with what we know. So I'm going to do function. I'm going to do some powers. Let's call it that. So we're going to start off with four numbers. Again, I'll show you how to make this more dynamic later on. So I'm going to do num one through num four. Okay. For my parameters. And inside of here, let's just start off with something simple. So let's do const. I'm going to do square one. In this case, I'm squaring this. And then I'm going to set this equal to math.pow. Okay. And I'm going to do num one and then two. So remember, when you do this, if you're squaring a number, you can multiply the number by itself. So you can do num one times num one. Or you can use this guy right here, which basically has this first guy as the base and the second guy as the exponent, right? So we're basically taking this number one and we're raising it to our second power. Okay. So let's go ahead and copy this and paste this a few times. And let's change this and this at the same time in each case. So I'm going to change this to two. I'm going to change this to three and I'm going to change this to four. Okay. So basically all I need to do now to finish this is return something. So I'm going to return square square if I could spell that correctly. So square one square one plus my square two. I can't spell square. So square two plus square square three and then plus square four. Okay, so now let's come down here and call this guy. I'm going to console.log the sum powers, and then I'm going to pass in something simple. So two, three, four, and five. So remember how this works. These guys right here are the arguments. They're the real values, and they're taking the place of this in this function. So two is going to take the place of num one. Okay, so two is going to be squared, so that's going to give me four. Okay, then down here, three is going to take the place of num two. So this is going to give me nine. So on and so forth. So four is going to take the place of num three. That's going to give me 16. And then this guy for num four, it's going to be five. That's going to get plugged in. So that's going to be 25. Okay. So if we run this right now, we would get 54. This is four plus nine, which is 13 plus 16, which is 29 plus 25, which is 54. So pop this open and run this and you get 54. Okay. As expected. Now, another way that you could have done this is you could make a separate little function that just squares a number. Okay. Or raises the number to whatever power you want. So let's go ahead and put this up here and I'm just going to say function and let's say we're going to call this get power instead of some power. So get power and it's going to take in one number. Okay. And I'm going to purposely name this different than these other parameters so I can show you what's going on here. So from this, what I'm going to do is return. I'm going to do the same thing. So math.pow and I'm going to do the number. Okay. And then I'm going to do two. So a common mistake here would be to put something like num1 trying to reference these parameters here. This guy right here, this parameter here is going to be read in here. Okay. So if I pass something in, if I start here and I pass this in here, it's going to get passed in eventually into here. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So let's come down here and let's just change this instead of squaring the number inside. And now I'm going to let my function do that. So let's go ahead and get rid of this and we're going to call the function. So get power. Okay. And then over here, I'm just going to get rid of this part and it's going to give me the same result, but let's think about why it gives me the same result. So basically when I get inside this function, I'm calling get power. Okay. And I'm passing in this guy right here. So this is two. Two replaced num one. So when I come up here, whatever this is, I passed in a two now, okay? And that two is gonna come right here. And so I'm gonna square two and get four, okay? So when I square two and get four, that comes back and gets stored in this square one variable. If you try to name this something like num one or something like that from this function, that's where people get lost. And then you're gonna have an error, right? It's gonna tell you num one is not defined. So let's put this back to number here. And if we run this right now, we pop this open and clear this out and run this, you get 54. It's the same thing. Okay. Now we can make this a little bit cleaner. Let's go ahead and use our multi-line selection and let's get rid of this altogether. We don't need any of this. So I'm going to get rid of this and let's come over here and get rid of all of this. 
and I'm just going to put a plus sign everywhere and let's just clean this up real quick. So I'm going to get rid of this and let's get rid of that. And you can delete this. I know most of you will have an automatic formatter. I've turned that off for specific purposes right now, but normally you have a formatter to where basically when you do something, it'll format it for you automatically. So we're gonna return just this. So now I've made this a little bit simpler, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more concise. You don't need all those variables if you're just doing one thing. You're just returning something, so you just wanna return that thing. So I'm going to figure out what is this guy right here. So in other words, I'm passing in a two here. So get power, I'm calling that with two. So two comes in here, two gets squared is four. So the result of this is four, okay? Then the result of this is nine, right? Because I'm putting in a three. Then the result of this is gonna be 16. Then the result of this is gonna be 25. So it's the same thing, just more concise. So let's pop this open. Open. Let's go ahead and clear this and let's go ahead and run this and we still get 54. So as expected. Now, where might this immediately come in handy? Well, let's say that instead of squaring the number, you wanted to cube the number. Well, before where we had all these math.pow's in there, we'd have to go in there and change the exponent from two to three each time. Now, because I have a function that gets the power, what I want to do is just change it in one place, okay? And then if I pop this back open, now what's going to happen is two will be cubed. And let me write this out for those of you who are bad at math. Two will be cubed. So it's two times two times two now. So that would be eight, okay? And then you'd have plus three is cubed. That's 27. Then plus four cubed will be 64. And then plus five cubed would be 125. So if you add all those up, you're going to get eight plus 27, which is 35. And then 35 plus 64 is going to give you 99. And then if you add that to 125, the final result here is going to be 224. Okay, so let's pop open the terminal and clear this and run this and you do get 224. So you can see that splitting this up and having this function call another function to do part of its job makes it a little bit easier if you need to modify something. And some of you are gonna say, well, you could have just passed in the exponent here, right? You could have made another parameter there and passed in the exponent that way. Yeah, you can do that. It's personally gonna be up to you, but in most situations, you wanna write these smaller, more task-driven functions in case something breaks. You don't have to go keep going back through these functions and saying, okay, well, was it this? Was it this? Was it this? All right, to kind of solidify this, let's do another example. So what we'll do here, we've already talked about calculating a person's total bill based on their pre-tax, pre-tip bill, their tax rate, and then their tip, okay? So we're gonna make a function that relies on two other functions. So we're gonna make these smaller functions. So the first function will be a get tax function. So function, we're just gonna call this get tax. And this is gonna take in the bill. So this is the pre-tax bill and then just the tax rate. So we'll pass that in, okay? And basically I'm just gonna return the bill times the tax rate, okay? So nice and simple. Then the other function is going to get the tip. So the function here will be get tip, and that's gonna take in the bill, but it's also gonna take in a service level, right? So your tip is always gonna depend on, you know, did I get bad service or good service or really great service, excellent service? So we're gonna categorize bad, good, and excellent. And so let's just return. I'm gonna start by asking if the service triple equals too bad, okay? If it does, then I wanna do the bill times 0.15. And you can make this more dynamic by passing in this rate right here based on what the service is. But for right now, I'm just gonna keep it simple and hard coded. So then you could ask if the service, if the service triple equals to, let's say good. In this particular case, I want the bill times 0.2, okay, for 20%. And then your last case here where you're not bad or good, let's say it's excellent service. Well, now I wanna do the bill times 0.25 for 25%, okay. So this guy right here, if we come down, now we're ready to make a little calculate bill function that relies on these two. So let's do function. We're gonna do calculate bill, and we're gonna take in the bill. We're gonna take in the tax rate, okay? And we're gonna take in the service. So you always have to think about in the final function, the one you're actually calling on the outside, what do I need for these functions that it relies on? Well, I need a bill, they both have that. I need a service level and I need a tax rate. Okay, so I've gotta pass those guys in. So the first thing I'm going to do is just return a little string that says your bill for today is, I'm gonna put two dollar signs here. One is gonna be for the actual dollar sign. And then inside of these curly braces here, I'm gonna do the calculation. So I'm gonna do the bill. Okay, so this is the pre-tax, pre-tip bill. Plus, I'm going to basically call this get tax guy. So I'm gonna call the get tax, and I'm gonna call it with the bill and then the tax rate that gets passed in. So this is something I'm going to pass in when I call this calculate bill function, 
okay? Then the next thing I want to do is I want to add to this the get tip, okay? And in this particular case, I want to pass in the bill and then the service level. So right now, everything is basically good to go, okay? You can think about how this works. Your bill for today is you're going to start with the bill that gets passed in plus the get tax. You're passing in that bill and you have the tax rate. Both get passed in and they come to here, okay? And it's going to calculate your tax for you. So it's going to add that in. Then you're going to get the tip. Again, you've got the bill that got passed in, the service got passed in. So you're going to come to this function and run that. So let's go ahead and give this a shot with something like 100. So let's console.log this guy with, let's say, calculate bill. I'm going to use 100 for the pre-tax, pre-tip bill. I'm going to use, let's say, 15% for the tax. And let's say the service was good, right? So we would expect that to be 20%. So what you would see here is 100 plus 15 plus 20. And let me make this as a comment real quick. So basically, we will get 100 plus 15. Okay, 15 is the result of the get tax, because if we come up here, I'm passing in 100, tax rate is 15%, so you get 100 times 0.15, which is 15, okay, so that comes back. And then you have good service, so if we look up good here, this is going to be 0.2 times the bill, so that should be 20, right? 100 times 0.2 is 20. So if we go ahead and run this, we're going to get 135. 100 plus 15 is 115, plus 20 is 135. So let's go ahead and run this. And we get your bill for today is $135. And you can play around with this as much as you want. So let's say we do something like 96. And let's say we change this to 0 0.08. And let's say we change the service to something like bad. Well, now we would expect what? Well, 96 would be in this position. That's the first thing. Then plus, I need to get my tax. So I would have 96 multiplied by 0 0.08, which is going to be $7.68. So this right here would be 7.68. And then lastly, you're going to have your bad service, which is a 15% tip, okay? So a 15% tip, you'd have 0.15 times 96, which is 14.4. So let's put this as 14.4. So if you sum these guys together, you're gonna get 118.08, okay? So $118.08. So let's pop this open and clear this and run this. And we get your bill for today is 118.08. And don't worry about this. This is something JavaScript does with decimals. I'm gonna show you how to fix this later on in the course. If you wanted to, you can round things for now to kind of clean that up, but it's really easy to do this. You just work with integers and in the end you transform it into a decimal.